Okay, so in this video we're looking at the longest suspensions in NRL history. Now, there are two reasons why I'm doing this video. One, Victor Radley is facing uh, a ban for the headbutt uh, incident against the St. George Illawarra Dragons. He's looking at three to four weeks as a minimum. Uh, and of course, uh, George Burgess famously uh, in 2019 got nine weeks for an eye gouge, which was his second similar offence uh, within a few months because he missed the start of the 2019 season following a suspension uh, from in carryover from the international games against New Zealand where he was also suspended for an eye gouge. Now what is very interesting is the latest suspension on this list that I've compiled of 10 or plus weeks for suspension was in 2012 and the judiciary now have changed uh, the way they deal with suspensions whereby at the start of each season each player has a clean slate. There is no longer loading when it comes to players facing the judiciary when it comes to misbehaviour on the field which is very, very noticeable. One player appears twice on this list. Um, most of the suspensions take place between 2001 and 2005 in a four-year period. And this was a period where the NRL was, was grappling with a lot of foul play on the field. The game has changed somewhat. Uh, fighting was still a very prevalent part of the game. Uh, the shoulder charge hadn't been outlawed at this point. So the rules have changed somewhat, and um, what is deemed acceptable and not acceptable on the field, uh, throwing punches now is an automatic sim bin and lengthy suspension, so we don't really see a lot of fighting anymore. Anyway, let's have a look at it. So I'm going to start from the 10 weeks up to the longest, which is 18 weeks, and there's some very infamous incidents in here. Greg Bird comes in in 2004 with a 10-week suspension for dangerous contact. Greg Bird, quite a dirty player. Uh, he ended up playing at Catalan. Uh, he became very controversial for some of his off-field antics as well. Uh, there were some he had some legal issues, <laughs> but he was also regularly suspended for on-field indiscretions. His longest suspension was 10 weeks in 2004 for a dangerous contact on an opponent. Uh, Tim Madison comes in at 10 weeks a few years prior in 2002 for striking an opponent. Most of these striking things are sucker punches and elbows to unsuspecting opponents. He got 10 weeks in 2002. Uh, Luke McDougall got 10 weeks for a dangerous throw tackle in 2005. Now, we've seen, obviously, the tackle area right now with the hip drop, um, the cannonball, uh, the crusher. These are the type of tackles at the moment the NRL are trying to crack down on with suspensions and, and sin bins. The, the throw tackle has sort of disappeared from the game. It still happens every now and then, but a dangerous throw tackle. Um, the last time someone was suspended for a dangerous throw tackle of more than 10 weeks was Luke McDougall in 2005. Uh, Luke O'Donnell got 11 weeks for a reckless high tackle in 2003. We still see a lot of headshots now and a lot of high tackles now. They haven't had that length of suspension for quite some time. Again, with that removal of loading, uh, I think that's part of part of the reason why. Luke O'Donnell got 11 weeks in 2003 for a reckless high shot. Uh, 1998, when so the NRL's first season following the Super League War, Josh Stewart got 12 weeks for two separate high tackles in the same game. They were six weeks apiece. Uh, they got combined together for a 12-week suspension. So again, high tackles have always been an issue in the game, but lengthy suspensions were more likely to result in previous years than in more recent years. Uh, now, John Hopawate, <laughs> he appears on this list twice. 2001, he got 12 weeks for three contrary conduct charges. This is the famous game against the New Z uh, North Queensland Cowboys where the finger up the bum, which he did more than once. Uh, he inappropriately made contact with three separate North Queensland Cowboys players. That's the infamous... Anal probe, as I'll call it. Um, John Hopawato, a very controversial figure within the game. Um, lots of off-field indiscretions as well. And on the field, he copped a lot of suspensions. That isn't his longest. He has one of the longest in the history of the game, which ultimately ended his career. But he got 12 weeks in 2001 for the famous finger up the bum incident. Clint Newton comes in in 2004 with 12 weeks for a striking charge. Again, elbows and sucker punches. Uh, that was in 2004. He got 12 weeks. The most recent lengthy suspension of double figures when it comes to weeks is James Graham in 2012 for a biting incident. Now, James Graham used to play on the edge, proper hard-nosed uh, British forward with that bulldog spirit, played on the edge, very passionate competitor. Um, yeah, he got 12 weeks for biting. He also had some other suspensions for you know disrespecting referees, late shots. But that, I think, was um, the low point in his career when it came to his suspensions. Playing on the edge, you want a front row forward to lay down the law, but he bit an opponent, he gets 12 weeks. 
Um, but there, there are two further suspensions that are longer than James Graham's biting incident. John Hopawate, he appears again. 2005, 17 weeks for a striking incident that was quite sickening. That was his last game uh, in the NRL. It ended his career. 2006, no one wanted to sign him. And he was suspended out of the game. Uh, he was too controversial, too hot-headed. And as time went on, he was racking up the suspensions. And clubs who just were not willing to sign a player with that kind of rap sheet. Um, and, and since he's been away from the game, other things have happened off the field, in his private life, a lot of legal, legal issues. John Hopperwart, very controversial character. And you do get the occasional player who is just generally a grub. John Hopperwart John was yeah, quite disliked by a lot, of, um, a lot of fans when he was playing. Now, finally, the longest ever suspension... Since 1998 in NRL history is Danny Williams at the Melbourne Storm West Tigers incident with the sucker punch, uh, 18 weeks. Um, it has become an infamous incident. Uh, it did lead to the longest suspension the game has ever seen um, in regards to on-field indiscretions since 1998. Um, an incident happened at the previous play of the ball. Uh, he took it personally. He retaliated in a quiet, disgraceful manner on an unsuspecting opponent where he sucker punched him in the back of the head, knocked him clean out. Um, and we can look at the Danny Williams 18 week suspension in more detail in a separate video. That was possibly the, the, the ugliest on field incident I think that we have seen in modern times. 18 weeks uh, straight out for that for that incident. Um, for the Melbourne Storm against the West Tigers. It's on the internet. You can find it on YouTube. Danny Williams, uh, you know, incident. It's it's pretty sickening stuff, if you think about it. Um, if the opponent was to turn around and go fist for fist, it's a different story. They both get sin bin or sent off. Probably both get suspensions. But the, the opposition player has turned his back. He's going back into the defensive line and he just whacks him with a hook around the back of the head and, and, and led to some severe injuries as well. That wasn't just a clean knockout, there were some longer lasting health impacts for the opposition player. So and the two reasons why I'm doing this video is one, Victor Radley's facing the judiciary yet again. And now that they've taken away loading from previous seasons and no carryover loading to start each season, his suspension is going to be a lot less than what it would have been had he been playing in an earlier generation, so in the 2000s or 2010s, had Victor Radley been playing then, his suspensions would have been longer. He would have made this this 10 plus week list. And then also a lot of people have been watching the George Burgess uh, suspension history video from 2019 and I did. Now, his latest suspension at that point was an eye gouge where he got nine weeks. And I totted up all his suspensions in his career between 2015 and 2019. He had missed a full season, pretty much, worth of, of NRL games due to suspension. Um, that's going to be frustrating as a coach when you have players who are regularly getting suspended, like Victor Radley. You want Victor Radley to play on the edge because he's a great defensive player. He's a great aggressive tackler. And, and that, that raises you know the energy levels of your team. Uh, Felice Kafusi has also got sin bin today, as I'm recording this video for the Dolphins against the Melbourne Storm in Indigenous round. He will also be facing the judiciary for a high shot. Um, so a couple of players were put on report uh, in a few of the games so far in Indigenous round. Kafusi and Radley will be facing the judiciary. Victor Radley's looking likely at a three to four week suspension at the minimum. It could be longer, but it won't be in the double figures range. Now, in the comments section below, I want you to list the pros and cons of removing uh, loading. Do you think at the moment suspensions are too short for acts of foul play? Do you think we should bring back longer suspensions to act as a deterrent? Obviously, we saw the magic round fiasco with all the sim bins uh, previously, which hasn't happened this year, but happened in previous years where they went overboard when, you know, going for after head contact and dangerous contact. We're currently seeing the crackdown on the hip drop cannonball uh, uh, tackles as well. Uh, the hip drop uh, controversial crackdown. Um, you know, is it accidental? Was it deliberate? Are players actually being coached to do this? Are they not? Um, how has it got in the game? The cannonball tackle as well. We've seen players get suspended for that. And of course, the continued crackdown on high contact. Some of these suspensions were due to reckless high tackles. So are the judiciary getting it right with lengths of suspension, setting out a precedent saying we are going to try and deter players from doing this? Uh, with the with the with the suspension and fines that go with that, are we too lenient? 
Anyway, I'm going to leave that there. Thank you very much for watching. Please place your thoughts in the comment section below. Give a like and subscribe if you feel that you like the content. And I'll have some more content for you very, very soon.